That's life. That's life. That's what all the people say. You're riding high in April, shot down in May. But I know I'm gonna change that tune. When I'm back on top, back on top in June, I said that's life. We both went there. I've been a puppet, a pauper, a pirate, a poet, a pawn and a king. I've been up and down and over and out. And I know one thing. Each time I find myself well, here's, to, here's to you and many more. Well, I don't know about that. Oh, you know, yeah. You oh, notice yeah. this is going down rapidly. This is a lady just died today, or yesterday, 115 years old in Los Angeles. The oldest American on record. And she had all of her faculties to the end. I had an aunt who made 107. I thought that was kind of a record. But after she got to 104, I used to visit her, I became Harry. <laughs> so, uh, we were pretty tight, actually. She only had one son, and he died, and I was... You were... You were it. This relative. You were it. Anyway, it. she... Uh, at, at about 104, I became Harry, instead of... Uh, wow. And so, how are you, Harry? Great, you know. What are you gonna well, say? you know... It doesn't have to be 104. We lose, we lose a portion of our mind long before that. Don't tell me that. I'm only 93. I know. I know you are. And I'm, I've lost a lot of mine. <laughs> well, I'm not there yet, but I'm oh, losing mine. How old are you? Eight. Eight? You're a kid. Yeah. God, I was getting punched out when I was 13. <laughs> <laughs> In a big ball and I, my, and now the end. So I face the final curtain, my friend, I'll say it clear, I'll state my case. Interviewed five groups of clients, and that was the end of that. I said to Betty when I came home, I have to make my living that way, I'm, we're going into the real estate business. What was his, his uh, crime that you got him acquitted of? His problem was that he was a pimp. And he had a hotel with the natural production of it. And I wouldn't have got, the reason I got into it was his attorney had a heart attack and said, Bob, help me out. And he was a halfway friend of mine, so I agreed to him. Interviewed him and took the case off. Pretty damn crazy. He should have gone to jail and he did Then again, too few to mention. I've heard of it. We have never I met Robert Knight. It's very nice to well, finally meet you, Bob. To sorry, we put up with this guy. Somebody has to. Saw it Somebody has Don't say sorry. Without exception. <laughs> I plan each charted course, each careful step along the byway and more. Much more than okay, this. This is the newest member of the running group. Yes. I've heard about the drum impression. <laughs> running group. <laughs> yeah, every, every morning you have to walk or run or shop. <laughs> it tires me to think of it. Well, you know, that's the trouble. It's been tiring us too, and we have, we have some we all shopping. Okay. Marianne has a uh, small knee problem, I have a small hip problem. 
uh, Celeste has a small heel problem. Yeah, I've got, a, I've got problem. a hip problem. Oh, we're all just aesthetic. <laughs> After 25, 30 years yeah. of six miles, uh, five miles, three miles a day. And it's, it's, so good for, six, it's so good six, for you, but they're still here. 20 years. <laughs> It was 25. 25. Well, we are. Yeah. Yeah. We've done our bit yeah. by the young running group. We're going to have a margarita. Okay, he needs a margarita. <laughs> no more running. My share of losing And now As tears subside I find it all So amusing To think I did all that, and may I say, not in a shy way, oh no, no not me, I did it my way, for what is a man, what has he got? If not himself, then he has not to say the things he truly feels. It isn't bothering me. Why should I bother it? You gotta take a book and hit it. Cheese things, cheese rolls, all the things. I swear, seriously. You're a cheese face. It may hurt for about two seconds. <laughs> 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 Sorry. No, it doesn't. That you doesn't matter. Be <laughs> that doesn't matter. You, you be know where you're going with this. You, you know where you're going. Intelligent up to a point. I am quite intelligent. <laughs> but <clears throat> intelligent enough not to engage in a conversation about politics. <laughs> sort of like religion. especially on camera. Mm -hmm. It was my way. I flew in Thursday. Bob and I went to the aquarium. We looked at a sea dragon. At, Bert, at the Birch Aquarium? Mm -hmm. We had a good time. It was interesting. Mm -hmm. We were in a bit of a hurry. A lot of unemployed people there. Moms. <laughs> they all have $12 to get in. Right, what else are you going to do? Yeah, but they all got to kill the time somewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you better watch TV. Well, you go back and have a beer and do that all afternoon. Fend off the landlord when he wants you to pay for the rent. We don't have it because he went to the Bridge Aquarium 12 times this week. <laughs> yeah, we had a good time. Good. We went to the coffee shop in La Jolla. Yeah, it was fun. We went to Florida. Bob and I spent time in Florida. We went on some dates. Oh, you saw those pictures? Your dates. I met all his girlfriends. when you were down south. Yeah. Martha. Winks. Winks, huh? I like Winks. I like them both. They're all really nice. Winks has more money and she's more pretty. Martha's a little fun, though. Martha's, Martha's moving up in the scale. Yay. <laughs> and she's younger. Child of a mere 72. Oh yeah, that is quite young. Yes, to 93 it is. <laughs> 20 years wow. junior. That's impressive. He's pointed this out to me that I say age is only an opinion. I figure if you're alive, you're the same age. Well. <laughs> Oh, that's oh. nice. Oh. Kiss, kiss kissing. Back. <laughs> I like your water. 
Oh no, you can't have it. Kiss, kiss Bob. Bob, kiss Bob. Kiss Bob. Mwah. 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 She wants to give Mwah. you a kiss. Mwah. It's his tie. He's got a tie. You haven't used kiss. the tie. Seen a tie before. They're an old fashioned style. She's <laughs> never seen a tie before. <laughs> 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 Bob, do I get a kiss? Kiss? Kiss Bob. Give me a kiss. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's so nice. Nice. Do I get a kiss too? Oh, no. Well, we lucked out. Dance. 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 Well, it's roughly five to one ratio. I find it quite fair. <laughs> Guys don't make it to 93 no, very often. Time you get at 90, the weaklings have faded away. It's nice. sort of a peculiar place. It's a club that has a golf course with It's a party holes. pad. And uh, you buy a house there for more than it's worth, and you join the club for, for more than it's worth, and you have dinners there that are they try to keep, they give you free movies. I can take Lindsay to movies. My 77 year old, 72 year old girlfriend to movies there. We have a few drinks. Time goes by. There's a bird in the background. What's your bird's name? George. George. George lives it's in the a, backyard. Uh, sort of a, uh, what do you call it? It's a mockingbird? No, no, it's a. Al Hinger, I think it is. Al Hinger. He was named by a Brazilian Indian <laughs> tribe. The damn things have been around. I've read about them. And they've been around for something like 10 million years. Now, they have bone structures Ten that they put years. go into the chemistry of the age, and that's what they say they've been around for, which gets them through several ice ages, a few earth equations, and so forth. Dinosaurs have come and gone. These babies are still here. They hunt underwater and they swim very fast. For example, <laughs> come solid charged. bones. Then they well, get up on the perch about it for Thanksgiving. That chair, I don't think he knows yet. And they dry this, dry themselves off, so that they can go back in and catch another fish. Mm -hmm. It's a circuit. Interesting. And they live about 30 years, but it's pretty unexciting. 30. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's sort of like being in an old folks' home. <laughs> right. So this isn't a pet bird that you bought at a store. This no, is no, this native. guy, I've approached him several times and George doesn't like it and he hisses at me. He hisses, you know. As if you were living in his yard. As a matter of fact, I probably am. <laughs> <laughs> he was there first. Okay. What are you eating? In all fairness. Well, I like George. He's kind of keeps me company. He's solitary. He had a mating season and he invited a Mrs. George around for a while, but he's really not very social. Sent her on her way. I don't know, he could be Mrs. George, you never really know. It's true, that's true. Until you learn my freshman class at Michigan. Well, in sprints, that's true. Oh, I'd love to tell that story. I think she brag about it since I never heard it before today. Yeah. Look at him carrying this thing around. As a freshman, we went through physical training at the University of Michigan. There were approximately 1,500 to 2,000 in my class. We all had to do, we ran sprints of 25 or 50 yards, I've forgotten which. Anyway, I ended up the number one sprinter in that group. And the physical physical director, who was about five foot two, a little guy named Dr. Mays, who's sort of a character, uh, said, you've got to try out for the Michigan track team. So I spent $35 buying a pair of shoes, and this is 1932, which I did, 35 bucks was a lot of money in those days. And I didn't have too many of them. Anyway, I stretched my budget, bought the shoe, track shoes, they went down to the field house, and uh, I, we started racing against various 
kids who were there, young black males, or entirely male, black, white, yellow, and all kinds. Anyway, I uh, started out fine with these blacks. But they, um, for the first 25 yards, I'd seem to be ahead of them. But after about 30 yards, which was the, I, they, I, those heads started coming up on my left and on my right. And I decided I wasn't quite as fast as I thought I was. And so I dropped out of the sport. No curry, no cur guts for reinforced uh, sprinting. <laughs> I did become a friend of one of theirs, and I explained to him the reason for their success was that the tigers used to eat them, and the ones who got the, his grandparents who had sprinted faster had been caught. And the ones who, uh, it was natural selection, and it was not working in my favor. Hmm. What did you do with your shoes then? I think I gave them to a good charity. I don't know, remember. Hmm. Tell them about Lydia. Lydia Mackey? Yeah. What did I do with Lydia? Well, tell her when Lydia came in your life. Oh, tell about how your father buried the money for the house. Oh, in 1920, in 1930, I was a junior in high school, I guess, about that. And he said, I want you to dig a four foot hole in the backyard. And uh, so I dutifully did it. And he went to New York and he came home. In the Monday, I don't remember what day of the week it was. I think I guess it was a Friday. Anyway, we had a suitcase, and in the suitcase there was $10,000 in cash, which represented the cash proceedings of all of his life insurance. And the reason he did it, he had to do it in New York, was that the banks had all closed in New Detroit and New York, and you couldn't transfer funds. And he put the suitcase down in the hole, we filled it up with a canvas over it, <laughs> and said, I don't tell anyone. Of course, that was ridiculous. I wasn't going to tell anyone. But he... Uh, Can I come here? I remember him. And then in the more Monday morning, we dug it up, and he left with the suitcase, and he went down and paid off the mortgage on our house. So I think it was, he must have had more than 10 so I think the mortgage was 13000 he told me. I, he had another three plus the ten he got from the insurance. So when he died, which was some twenty years later, he really didn't have much insurance. <laughs> we also had a house. We had a house that sold it was better than the insurance, I'm sure. I remember that house out of our house. I'm picturing it fun. What is it? Well you didn't come along till nineteen you were there in nineteen forty two. Uh, he, he lived in the house until he passed away. Well, my mother lived there for 10 years after that. Yeah. There were two stairways up and there was a maid named Lydia Mackey from Finland. She worked for my mother, underpaid of course, for 45 years. Until she was 82. Wow. And she'd sit in the kitchen and say, I was going to the living room and grandma would be there and say, you know I'm going to fire her. Because she gets her sticky hands all over her. You know, I'm kind of 82, maybe it's time to let her go. Yeah, I think so. And then mother was about 86, and she, and then she'd go in the kitchen, and Lydia would be in, and she says, you know, I'm thinking of quitting. That, that woman, she's so a bitch, you know. She she's referred to as the old devil. The old devil. <laughs> 82 and, and yeah, My mother, she actually got along. They needed they each other for quite a few yeah, years. One couldn't walk, and one couldn't use her hands. So, <laughs> and uh, Lydia was a good person. She did leave some of her money to Nancy. No, she did not. She did too. No, she had like two hundred thousand dollars when she oh, died. Oh no! Hey, she did. And grandmother said, "Well, it's all my money." I said, "Well, she, she worked all her life for them. <laughs> she gave it to a relative in Seattle." Yeah, that's true. Most of it. She was a good lady. She had a speech impediment, and consequently, she was also a very good cook. So I never learned how to cook, that's one reason. That's one reason. Another that's reason, reason he doesn't want to. I didn't want to learn. Uh, so we uh, sat at a different table. This was in glass up or Tennessee. Or Nancy was about 55 years Nancy younger than she currently is. Yeah. So check out the... Yeah. Check out the was about the same. Yeah. Okay. And we went into a restaurant. And they decided, I said, you've had enough of us. 
you eat at that other table, so they decided to eat alone. We're happy to do that. And Betty and I, my wife and I, came over, sat down at another table, as if we had no relationship. And I saw them eating, and there was this girl who sort of a typical, friendly Tennessee waitress, about six feet tall and 120 pounds skinny. And, uh, I got the idea that I was opposed to young people being married. And I said to Betty, my God, those people over there, they shouldn't be married. And it's ridiculous. My brother had about 14 or 15 years old. So he, he looked at you. Kind of, <laughs> there was yelling in the restaurant and I was about how, how bad it was to have child marriages. And it, this, this went on for quite a while. And the girl said to me, you but shouldn't talk to like one of those yellow, people that way. They're just a happy, young, married couple. Oh, <laughs> 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 they're like kids, you know, they're like 14 years old. Well, anyway, that went on for a pretty, pretty good act. Needless to say, we never wanted to not eat with them again. <laughs> <laughs> the whole family was grown up in Colorado to a dude ranch near Durango. It was quite of a luxury place. Yeah. And I had Nancy Bruce in Virginia. Virginia was about six or seven years old. Nancy was 16. And, um, I was paying about $150 a night to keep them in a cabin. And I went in and she, Nancy was on the, stretched out on her bed crying. And I, her hair was a lovely shade of white. She dyed her hair and it was a habit among new girls. And she was crying like hell. And I said, what's wrong, Nancy? She said, there are no men here. <clears throat> she immediately, by the three nights later, she was doing the Charleston around the fireplace to the admiration of several people her age, male variety, and uh, she never lacked for fun in that, but I always remembered that, see, hey, I'm spending all this money in this child's weeping. See, she was your high school sweetheart? Well, we were in high school when we first met. And, uh, I thought she was pretty cute, and I, we dated on and off. We were going steady, as they used to say, for about eight or nine years, I guess. We had a lot of wars. She'd go off with some handsome prince, and I'd go off with some handsome princess. And then then we'd go on and for a year, then we decided we weren't doing as well as we were doing, so we ended up back together. So we were, there were two or three of those. Well, how old were you when you married her then? I was 24 and she was 23. And how did you ask her to marry you? Yeah, and for developing, keeping your balance She sat in a wing chair and we've been out on a date. And I got down on one knee and I said, Will you marry me? And I got whipped out a ring that my father had given me. And she said, Is this a proposal? <laughs> or something smart like that. Anyway, I said, Yes, it's a proposal. And so that was. Oh, we got married. She was working at the time as a teacher, and we couldn't be work married and work at the school district that we were in. We married women weren't allowed, and she had to quit if she got married. Oh, the jobs were hard. She made two hundred and fifty dollars a month. I made a hundred working for an insurance company as a lawyer. And I was a trainee, in fact. Anyway, that was our early marriage. Then I won a case in the Indiana Supreme Court for Standard Accident Insurance Company, and they made $15,000 or something. It was a lot of money, even in those days. And the president of the company said, Bob, you're going to do all right. Next month, I got $100 a chance. I, was, I, I quit the month after that. You got how much the next month? $100 a month. Uh, extra 100 a month? Yes. 100 a month. Total? Yes. 
So she got two fifty. That's how we live. Our rent was thirty six dollars a month. We had a heated. She made a lot more as a teacher than you did as a lawyer. Yes, I was a trainee. Yeah. The lawyers were not. I looked young and I was young. Yeah. And then I went, I quit the standard accident after a year of this, and uh, I knew more than I did when I started, and I went to work for an insurance agency where they paid me $500 a month, and she got a little pregnant with Nancy, and I knew that she knew that he couldn't work much after that, so she had Nancy, and I got a new job, and I used to do it. Well, I, this guy gave me two secretaries and five Five hundred dollars a month. He said, "You got a client? The fees are all yours." So I had a pretty good thing going with that. Yeah. I hauled in some business. I don't know how much we made in one day, but it was not a lot of money. But I made I made out pretty well, one way or another. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend, or, you know? Uh, that somebody go into law? Would that be still a good career? I don't think I would today. I sort of a, oh, it's a good, it's good for business trading. But I don't think that the practice of law is so, so profitable. I mean, there are class actions where if you get a whole group of people, you can make a lot of money. And I made the years where I made up to six figures, which is pretty good for a lawyer. Uh, even in my day, I've been out of it for oh, I know. 20 years, I'm not quite that long. I'm, uh, I'm 93, and uh, I quit when I was 75. I still have some cases where I trust that I'm still working on, but they don't pay me $1,000 a year, you know. Lemons, yeah. as the me, the twins, oh, right? Can I hold her? Did she go to strangers? You go to strangers? Oh, oh thank you, you little sweetie pie. Give her a kiss. Give her a kiss. I nursed her father. I nursed your father. I'm a weird one. That's how I met Patty. I said, she said, your baby, your son was fine. And so I nursed him. I said, but now is the day. Well, I know that they always say they're always quiet when they're nursing, right? <laughs> the dad's like, oh, tell that story again. That's, that's how you met? Yeah. Our kids were in preschool. Yeah. And they were babysitting each other's kids and stuff. And now I think of my life. I like the story. Has vintage wine from fine old cakes. From the brim. To the dregs, it poured sweet and clear. It was a very good year. You're the garage. Man. I wonder what have I done with my life? Well, this is it. This is only one third of it. Yeah, it's only one third of the family. That's true. We should have another videography with Bruce and Jimmy. Well, well I don't know. We've done the best we can. Yeah. <laughs>